here is the stuff of which fairy tales are made. Emma, what was it for you for Diana? Did you have a, a word to get into her the way that she Yeah, I did. Um, mine was all right. All right. Um, I just, I love her voice so much. Right. I really miss it. All right. All right. I Thank spent the whole Josh. season well trying to do it. I can <laughs> give us all right. All right. All right. <laughs> you do it with your head as well. You like do the two. All right. right. It's really funny. She goes down at the end of all, everything she says, mm. which makes everything she says quite right. sound quite sad. Like, oh mm. yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed, enjoyed it. it. It was the yeah, best day of my love life. It. Best day of my life. And it kind of sounds very, very sweet and very, very sincere. I love the Diana we meet at the beginning for so many reasons. All the she's that adorable and incredible, but also because I feel like this is the Diana no one knows about. You know, we all know what she was like when she was older. There's so much, too much footage of her. And so I really was charmed by getting to know younger Diana. I was invited to the chemistry reads of the Camillas and I was asked to come and read um, in for Diana, which was mad because they hadn't even started filming season three, let alone thinking about season four. So that was taken to this place. They were doing pickups for season three. We were in a very stately home. We read the scene through and then Ben, the director, turned to Suzanne, one of the producers, and said, can I can I tell her now? Can I can I tell her? And Suzanne was like, let's maybe read it through once more. And I was like, like oh God, okay. And so then we read it through once it more. It yeah, and then, and then Ben was like, can I, can I do it now? And Suzanne was like, do it now. And then he was kind of like, we need to be our Diana. Um, but it was like, it was so intense. It was so intense. It was like X Factor, where they get the bands <laughs> together and they say, guys, we've got some bad news. And it cuts to them all be like, <sighs> and then they're like, the other lot are going home, you're through. It's like that, <laughs> yeah. like that dramatic. You're playing Margaret Thatcher. Yeah, that must have been an interesting experience for you to play someone so divisive maybe yes interesting experience but certainly a lot to work with always interesting to take on a character that has so many complexities and layers and that i guess divides people so thoroughly the prism that we look through in this series is through the prism of the crown and so any prime minister that is um, sitting in front of the queen is just a snapshot we certainly deal with some of the most prevalent issues during Thatcher's time uh, as Prime Minister, but again, they are slices of events. For instance, we are seeing as much of the character of Margaret Thatcher as she is as mother and as career woman than we are seeing her as politician necessarily, which, you know, gives us a different view into her than maybe we've seen in other portrayals of Thatcher. And we certainly don't think of her necessarily being emotive or even having any emotions whatsoever. And so we do see a little bit of that. It feels like a pretty well-rounded look into the character that we might not have seen before. Was it a very scratchy wig? Was it a, something that, you know, was easy to wear, easy to put on? Usually for the first week or two of, of wig wearing, you, you have a pretty per persistent headache till your head gets used to it or the wig gets used to your head. There were actually two wigs that they settled on. You know, her hair changed considerably during those 11 years. And so deciding on what the quintessential Thatcher colour was and if there was going to be a second wig for later on, what was that? quintessential colour that didn't adjust it too much from the original one, but was different enough that it felt like time had passed. And, you know, all of that, there's very, very interesting wig conversations that one has. So you have now relinquished these characters. Mm -hmm. you, what was that like to sort of just let go of it and pass on this, this baton to... Well, it was strange also because we didn't have any closure. Yeah, <laughs> we didn't like really I'm get like, closure because of COVID. Because of COVID, I was filming one day to the next and then I was in lockdown. So it was really strange. In terms of someone else taking over, my friend put it really well the other day where she was like, oh, it must feel like your ex is moving on, which is exactly what it feels like. It's kind of like, oh, that's that's nice. I hope they're happy, like, kind of um, thing. You do have to let go, I guess. I think it's a charm and, like, the brilliance of The Crown is that you see all these different actors play their versions of these people. It's so much more interesting than having one person do it and seeing one person's interpretation. Mm -hmm.